Hi there, this is Larry Nickel. Walking around the streets of Vancouver on a cold, rainy, lousy day. I was born here, St. Paul's Hospital in 1952. And my mom and dad got the call to be missionaries when I was 11 years old and we moved to Winnipeg. And Winnipeg wasn't a great experience for me, delivering the Winnipeg Tribune in freezing cold weather all the time. But two years later, we went to India. I finished high school there and moved back to British Columbia. First thing I did is I went to Bible school at Columbia Bible College. It was called the Mennonite Brethren uh, Bible Institution or something like that back in the day. And I met Edna there. We started going out in 1971. So we've actually been going out for almost 42 years. And it's been a really great, wonderful life here in Vancouver. Uh, my children live close by, Jason, Julia, and Laura. And now I'm just about have four grandchildren. See that tall building in the background there? That's where I live, way up there on the 17th floor. You should drop by and see me sometime. Now, Heather gave me a list of questions. First, tell us about yourself and how you found yourself composing music for this Christmas carol competition. Well, it so happens that I'm good friends with Cal Dick, Dr. Calvin Dick, and his wife Heather, and Sylvia Friesen, who's really, really great with choreography and all kinds of wonderful ideas that she can add to any show. What made you decide to become a composer? I've been composing since I was about 14 or 15 years old. Living in India, we didn't have TV. We, we could only get uh, one radio station in English and that was broadcast all the way from Sri Lanka Voice of America that's where I first heard uh, some of the Beatle music so we didn't have a whole lot of entertainment in India we had to make it up ourselves an important moment in my life was when mom and dad let us go to the movies they let us go see the sound of music and uh, I actually got to see it three times. And my brother Gordon memorized the whole thing. And one thing that really impressed me was high on a hill was a lonely goat herd with those puppets. So I figured, man, a living, why can't I make puppets like that? So I went to a wood shop, got some good wood and some chisels, and made marionettes and so we put these shows together with uh, all of the young people in our dormitory and I would write music on an accordion for this show I didn't think about it much back in that at that time that I was actually composing music it actually only occurred to me about four years later that I had been writing music so that's how composition got started for me. What instruments do you play? I play quite a few instruments, but none of them very well. Teaching high school band, you have to show those young people how to pick up a clarinet, a flute, a trumpet, a trombone, a saxophone, and show them the basics. So in a way I became a jack of all trades, but a master of none. I finished my grade 10 in piano, Toronto Conservatory. How do you use technology in your creative life? When I write music, I use a program called Sibelius, the industry standard for publishing music. Sibelius comes with all kinds of sampled sounds, so I can actually send music to my publishers as woodwinds or as strings, 
What are some of the things you try to achieve when you compose a piece of music? One of the impressions I had while studying at UBC was that a lot of those young composers were experimenting with sound but didn't really have a whole lot to say. They were trying to create a new voice in music and some of them were successful and others maybe not so much. But for me, being a Christian, I've always felt that my music should try to say something, something that people should hear. And sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Music is a really great tool for for getting mad. And sometimes my music is very angry. But most of all, my music is full of joy. And I, I find that you can help people to find meaning in life through your music. You've written other music. Was your approach different with a Christmas carol? Over the years I've written hundreds of pieces of music and Christmas is always really special. I have so many good memories getting up on Christmas morning, running downstairs to the tree and shaking boxes and trying to figure out what, what was in them. And when I think of Christmas music I try to imagine snow falling and families together celebrating. So my approach to Christmas music is always about the real meaning of Christmas and why we really have something to celebrate. What is a question you wish someone would ask you and then give us your answer? My favorite piece of music is probably Et Resurrexit by J.S. Bach in his B minor Mass. Another question might be, what do you think is the most significant work of music in the 20th century? And this might surprise you. I think it's the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And if you've never listened to that album, you really need to download it on iTunes and give it a close listen because the Beatles were able to take classical music and rock music and merge the two. This boat that we're walking past here is my wife's uh, dream boat. It's called After Eight and it goes sailing by our place every day. People are surprised to find out that I... I think most people would be surprised to find out that I hiked to Mount Everest in 1969. Three things you can't live without? Three things that I can't live without. Air, water, food. But I imagine the question goes a little deeper. I don't think I could live without my wife Edna, my children Jason, Julie and Laura, and my grandchildren. Family is so important. I'm sure family is important to you, too. Tell us about a live music performance you attended, any genre that you will never forget. Well, I recently got to sing under Eric Whittiger's direction, and we did an entire concert of Eric Whittiger compositions with the Vancouver Chamber Choir at the Orpheum. And I have to tell you, the man is really, really talented, not just as a composer, but as a director and as a music communicator. I was very impressed with him. Next Sunday, I'm going to see Paul McCartney at BC Place. One more really significant performance that I went to, Pat Metheny when he came to town back in the 80s amazing jazz musician with music that really speaks to the heart. Please briefly describe your current musical activities, private, within the community and public. Well, I'm pretty lucky. 
After teaching high school for 25 years at MEI, I got to go back to school, finish my doctorate. Now I am singing in the Vancouver Chamber Choir. We practice three times a week and give 10 concerts a year and tour all over the world. I direct a really neat adult choir called Jubilate. I write commissions and I've had over a hundred commissions in the last four years so it really keeps me busy. I get up every morning and write music. And one, one more thing that's really fantastic, I became the owner of Cypress Choral Music. I work with uh, 68 Canadian composers and every year we pick out a new batch of music to publish and I meet with these people over lunch and I get to travel to music conventions and give lectures and seminars and, and present new Canadian music to the world. Here I am back home. One thing I should say is that if you're a Canadian composer who likes to write choral music, you might want to send that piece my way. Let me have a look at it. 